here with the Bee Gees. Uh, 50 years, very long time. It was a lifetime. Does it feel like a long time? Some people don't live that long. <laughs> <laughs> no, it is, yeah, it is. And, uh, we're very proud of it. And, and uh, we're celebrating beginning this year. This, this is the beginning of our 50th anniversary. Right. It's nice to be named the Bee Gees as well. And the the Distrock Bill Gates and uh, some very single digits. Right. I mean, so yeah, yeah, because because I, I, you kind of look at that first. You go fifty years. Haven't they been together since they were born? I mean, was that was there a point well, where it crystallised well, into? Yes, but the, uh, yes, uh, and and the, the point is, when did we first record something? When did we first become a group? And I think that's that's about nineteen fifty eight, nineteen fifty nine. But we've all agreed between each other that. Um, the, the round figure of 2010 made the most sense. Okay. The, the, our first recordings were really about that point. Um, let's talk about some of the, the key elements that we associate with the Bee Gees. And the first thing, of course, is harmony. Was this just something that came naturally to you? Yeah. Uh, inspired by the Everly Brothers, of course. Yeah. I mean, uh, we, we loved the Everly Brothers. And when they first came along, we were kids, so we sounded like that. You know, and it's very high voice. We were never taught harmonies. And that's no. we, we just broke in harmony with kids because... Uh, without even knowing it, we were singing harmony. And what I think is missing on a lot of records today is is, is harmonies. Uh, but it's what people are attracted to the most. And, you know, there's a, an NBC show starting in the beginning of December called Sing Off in America. And the, the, this group's in there doing our song in harmony because they have no real uh, reference points today to choose on. Because when you do all the sort of records... But if that's true, then they will have. Yeah. I think, you know, there, there's a, there was always a challenge to sing in harmony when we were kids. That challenge isn't there... Or it should be there, and it will be. Um, are your voices naturally different? Did they occupy different parts of the register, or did you well, were you forced into parts of the register? You know the way, uh, because well, one person is taking another part. <laughs> what I felt comfortable. Yes. Remember, we come from an age where experimentation, with not just us, but a lot of groups, was more than all. But but as far as how it worked harmonically, yeah. Robin would sometimes take lead, or I would sometimes take lead. Morris always found that third part. And occasionally we'd have a song where Barry would do the first verse, I would do the second verse. And what yeah. felt comfortable? Or if somebody felt comfortable doing the song all the way through? There's yeah. certain songs that we'd write. Whoever was really singing the song when we were writing the song became the person that sang the song on the record. It just, we kept that natural flow through there. It wasn't a question of, okay, this is a good song, who should sing it? That never, that never came up. It wasn't the case, though, that somebody had a natural lower register and someone had a natural... Well, I have, a natu I have the natural lower register. Really? Robin's voice is much higher than mine. Yeah, but, um, yeah, I mean, it, it, Barry's voice is actually lower than mine. That's a, that's a fact. Mine more mid-register. But I, I, I can go high operatically. Um, yeah. But it depends on, on the song. And I, and I use the falsetto. My, well, I, I, I reach the top of my range about D. Uh, um, and then, but, but I found that my falsetto is exactly the same range, but an octave but an octave higher. Okay, so. let, let's talk about that falsetto because that's one of the other things that's, that defines the Bee Gees in the sort of popular imagination. Yeah. And uh, Nights on Broadway is, is famously the, the place the where it's introduced time. into... Actually, the first time was Please Read Me on the Bee Gees. Which is Bee Gees, Bee Gees, Bee Gees first. first in 1967. Yeah. But, but then, you know, that's the, the very early days. Yeah. And when it came into actually real being was um, in 1976. Was it? I mean, it's not an obvious thing, and it, it obviously it's got slightly comical overtones in pop yeah. culture. Well, did it have that view? I mean, how, did you have to be persuaded to record no. songs or go that way? No, we fell in love with it. Uh, um, it didn't matter who was singing it. We fell in love with that sound, and for us, it was Frankie Valli and Brian Wilson and uh, and the New Beats, and so it means different. It has come to mean different things to different people, and it's, it's easy to make fun of. Yeah. But think of all the other ones. Okay. I mean, you know, you know, at the same time, you had Big Jagged uh, and uh, McCartney were doing like the they Missy were thing, Missy Nice, yeah. uh, Prince, the most beautiful girl in the world. Yeah. Then there's been, you know, there, there was that period sort of hyper fame in the uh, 70s. Um, but actually, over the 50 yeah. years, it's been up and it's been down and yeah. the styles have changed. Yeah. And, and at the core of all of that is the songwriting. So yeah. does the songwriting drive the style, or has the style driven the... It's too analytical. Uh, it's too analytical. We, um, um, we just drive our own music. Yeah, we don't know and what the formula we is. We don't know what we're going to write next. Or, or we didn't know what we were going to write then. I mean, you've got to remember, when we're do, we've been doing all this stuff, we're coming from nowhere. We're not, there's, there's no reference points, no compass to what who... We won't kind of go out there and copy one. We're trying to be a first. 
and that's not the same as you know when looking Watch back it, yeah. and copying find something new find something new so here you are uh, with this uh, anniversary working as the two of you as the Bee Gees yes. are you going to work together musically to write oh, of course oh, absolutely um, because now it, it's it's uh, uh, the grieving has come to an end now for Morris, we'll always yeah. miss Mo and we'll always miss Andy and we'll always miss our dad and, and things like that you know uh, but yeah uh, we all have to go on with our lives and and uh, Robin and I love each other we want to we still love making music together. at the end of the day we have one of the we have the most successful catalog in the world alongside Lennon McCartney according to PRS week and last year uh, there's no reason why we shouldn't just keep, uh, keep moving we're just celebrating moving. Moving. We're songwriters as well. You know, we've written a huge yeah. song for other people, Chain Reaction, Islands in the Stream, Don uh, Woman in Love, Heartbreak for Dion Warwick, Emotion for Destiny's Child. Yeah. We have parallel uh, careers, really, um, in terms of songwriting, and that's what we're really proud of. And and, and the American market, which comes to very few British acts. And, yeah. uh, and hearing our songs in films being made today and the new Shrek movie coming out next year, and... It, it's, it's great. They use, they use a lot of songs all the time. And uh, the American market is the biggest market in the world. And it's, it's a fabulous feeling.